All right, so this is the last part of our videos for this section. Um, we're going to be looking for vertical and horizontal tangents, so locations of these. And we're going to start with this polar curve. So if you remember from before, we had horizontal tangents when our dy d theta is equal to 0, if our dx d theta did not equal 0. And then we also had a vertical tangent when our denominator dx d theta is equal to 0, if dy d theta also does not equal 0. So we're going to be using our derivative formula, just like before, to create the derivative for dy dx. And then we'll be testing it for the horizontal and vertical. So let's start. So we have r equals e theta. So that means our dr d theta, or our r prime, is going to be e theta. Nice and quick. So now we can plug that in. So dy dx is equal to r prime sine theta plus r cosine theta. And then it's r prime cosine theta minus r sine theta. All right. So we would end up with e theta sine theta plus e theta cosine theta. So again, we're just putting everything in terms of theta, which is our parameter. All right, and then we're going to see what is the top equal and the bottom equal. So we need to factor the top and the bottom. So we can take out an e theta and we get sine theta plus cosine theta. And then on the bottom, we do the same thing. All right, so we can cancel these, but even if the e theta and e theta were actually able to equal zero, they would both be zero, which is not what we're looking for up there for the horizontal or vertical. So we just take the top and the bottom, we set it equal to zero. So for the top, this is our horizontal tangents. We get sine theta plus cosine theta is equal to zero. So we get sine theta equals negative cosine theta. And then we divide by cosine theta. See, what we're trying to do is create tangent theta. Anytime you see that sine plus cosine, we would get now tangent theta equals negative 1. And you can look at the unit circle to see that tangent theta works when we get negative pi over 4. And tangents period here is pi. So we would put plus pi k. And then we look at the graph to see if this is true. And so there is our horizontal tangent just like before and then we're going to add pi to it we get it right there there's our next horizontal and if we keep doing this you can see there's our 7 pi over 4 11 pi over 4 and we would just keep continuing forever as we keep scrolling out and you would see there it is again so every pi from that negative pi k we will keep hitting horizontal tangents all right. So it works perfectly. You can always check all of these very, very quickly and use your calculator to verify it as well. Now, if we do the bottom, I'm going to move this one down a bit. We do the bottom, and that's going to give us our vertical tangents. So again, we set the top equal to get the horizontal tangents, and then the bottom is our vertical, just like here. See dy d theta, top, dx d theta, bottom. So cosine theta minus sine theta equals zero. We do the same thing as before. So I'm gonna make this equal to sine theta equals cosine theta. You just add one to the other and then divide by cosine theta. And we end up with tangent theta equals one. So same basic idea. Now theta would be pi over four and tangents period is pi k. So at pi over four and then every pi from that, we should be getting vertical tangents. And so at pi over 4, we have a vertical tangent. 5 pi over 4, we have a vertical tangent. And if I just keep adding 4, so I make this a 9, and I scroll out again, there it is again. See, vertical tangent, I just keep adding 4. So 9 would be 13. See, and it just keeps working. And so we would get the same thing. So that would be at 17. So our next vertical tangent. And you can do this with your graphing calculator as well. 
So again, we're just taking the derivative, setting the top equal to zero and the bottom equal to zero. And any place where they both are zero, we don't want to include those. So we don't have that issue here.